So we really focused on a, a true game plan. So we really spent a lot of time in the meeting room uh, putting full installations in to give the players uh, an idea of what that would feel like during the course of a normal in-season week. Uh, so it was really positive in that regard. So the players had a direct plan, you know, to draw from and study and get ready for. So I, I was pleased with that. I was pleased with the preparation and uh, obviously the performance. Did you see the steps forward that you needed out of Raidens and NPF to kind of help yeah. solidify their standing? Uh, I don't know about solidify, but uh, I was pleased, you know, with their performance. Uh, again, like, NPR just NPF had to like just not enough reps yet. You know he's been very limited in that regard. So he's really just gotten back, and so he's he's not up to speed. But I, I got to commend him on, on working hard to get to that point. So it's like a crash course in in essence in the last week and a half with him. But uh, yeah, I, I just love Nick. I like his work ethic. And then for Dylan, you know he came out. I thought the pass pro is improving. He's starting to throw hands. You know, he's latching handles, he's anchoring down. Uh, so those facets of his play are, are improving. So there's, there's really good correlation. You know, the players are taken from the, from the practice field to the game. And I think as a coach, that's all you can ask for. What about JC on, in his first yeah. NFL game? On, uh, oh, yeah, I think uh, he had some good things, had some really good snaps, and then he had some other snaps that I think he would want back. Uh, he's the first to make that admission. And uh, that's a great thing about coaching JC is that he has really good foresight and he understands the adjustments that he needs to make, you know, uh, to get to get better and improve. So uh, from that aspect, you know, uh, you know, I'm I'm really fortunate to have a player like that. A lot of times you have guys um, that come to you, whether they're rookies or veteran guys, and they're always looking for your critique or your thoughts on their performance. But when you have a player like him that says, you know, coach, I could have done better on this block. I could have done better on the perimeter. I could have post set it a little bit better square. That's that's refreshing and that's pretty cool. So, you know, he's continuing to make progress and uh, still a ways away from where he wants to be yet. But uh, we're getting there, surely. Has he really taken to what you teach in terms of hand placement and things like that? And then when you see yeah. that, it, does he have a certain level of strength that's the reason why he was the seventh overall I, pick? Yeah, I think he has, you know, long arms, strong hands, you know, which is a trait that every line coach looks for in our league. And the ability to throw those hands and time up his strikes to get handles or to get that latch, you know, to sit an opponent down, uh, that's what we're working hard on, you know. And so... Uh, it's no secret, you know. I'll share that with you and the fans, so that you know he, he's really challenged by that. And it's and it's different when you're going against different types of rushers. So the speed's different, you know. Uh, the moves are different. So having him acclimate, you know, and adjust to those types of, of players, I think is it's it's invaluable. So every time he sees a new player, so this is why these practices here against Seattle will be such an important piece in his his uh, his performance, and not only that, but but in his uh, um, overall development. Yeah, overall from a technique and a scheme standpoint, how advantageous can these joint practices be for your guys up front? Yeah, I love them. I absolutely love them. Um, there's there's so many dynamics at hand. I mean, in terms of matchups, you know, you can get a power type rusher, you can get a speed rusher, you can get a guy that has a lot of quick and flash to his rush. You get a real a good rusher that has uh, great hand skills. So matching our players up with their players, uh, you can't get that, you know, in a normal practice, you know, because they see our players on a daily basis. But when you have, you know, new players, different players, especially for a young guy that hasn't seen that, uh, it, it'll just help his progress. So I love these types of practices. I like the physicality of them. Uh, I think the players respect each other and they want to work and they want to get better and they know how important it is for their own development to get ready for the season. So, yeah, there's a lot going into it. And then, of course, you add in all the scheme and everything like that. It just makes it more challenging. Absolutely not. It's just the intent of the play call. Yeah. What, what, in terms of Will's growth, what have mm -hmm. you seen the most improvement in from uh, the time that you started the offseason work until now, now that you've seen him in a preseason? Yeah, it's a good example. The other night, just playing on time, um, taking what the defense gives him, you know, really diving deep into defensive football, defensive terminology, 
how a defense plays. Um, that's that's always good for a second year quarterback, kind of getting up there. What's his thought process pre snap and and really just growing? And he's he's done a really good job through that through camp. When you have a younger guy like this and all these veteran playmakers, like how do you approach making sure that he's just a distributor, a point guard, just getting everybody targeted? That that's the mentality. But really, like I said before, it's the intent of the play call. You know, you have certain play calls where the reads take you top down. Um, you have certain play calls where it's a more of a completion play, maybe get back on track. And it's another thing on that is the second year quarterback really diving deep into situations. You know, where am I on the field? What's the down and distance? Um, can I, I can't take a sack here. No bad plays. We're in field goal range. It's third and long. What do I need to do? You know, that that is really important in the development uh, for a second year player. But then you look at like a veteran like DeAndre Hopkins. Like, mm -hmm. he, like last year, a lot of times you say, man, Hopkins is there. I'm going to get it to him. Yeah. Period. Like, how yeah. do you go, go about managing like managing his huddle, his guys, and having trust in the in the call? But you know, those guys are going to go be players too. I mean, that's why they've made it to this level. The main question is: Have you ordered your bottle of Coleman's <laughs> Heard about it? It's hey, I'm all for it. Yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, it's, it's kind of a new world, isn't it? It is. It is. No, it's. I'm happy to see him. Hey, these guys just be themselves. That's all you can do. Uh, the competition is good. You know. Uh, Speaking of Jaquan, I just mentioned something about Jaquan a little earlier, but he's been really improving because coming from a college system where he's on the ball a lot, not necessarily being in a huddle, listening to plays. So he has to be in the huddle now, listen to a play, listen to a shift, a motion, and then can it, meaning go to another play based on the defense they're showing. So you have two plays a lot of times you get in the huddle, and that's been an adjustment for all the rookies, but he's really taken well to that, and um, he's improving. Kiaris has always been good with the ball in his hands. He showed that on the kickoff return. Um, trying to get him some more looks. He'll get some more looks this week at wide receiver position because I think most of our starters may play very little, if at all, this week. So those other guys get a lot of reps in the game. So, uh, But they're all playing different positions as well because you never know what can happen within the course of a game. So I see improvement in those guys. So I want to see more game film on them, and um, gotta, they'll get more plays this week. With a guy like Jaquan, what do you work on with him uh, tr trying to improve getting off the line and press? A guy with that kind of frame, how do you how do you go about teaching well, physicality? Well, well we have we have press release type drills and, and really it's not so much of being physical, it's you want to press with your feet and your hands, you know. Sometimes obviously you have to you know be physical with them, but more times than not, I want them to win with their feet first and then their hands and that way they won't have to be as physical they can use their what god-given gifts and he has quickness which is a really god-given gift for him so getting off the ball using his feet and hands um, and plus he's a slot receiver quote unquote so he's off the ball a lot of times so he don't have that as, as much as some other receivers have so a little bit easier for him when he's off the ball to be able to do that it's what he does in practice he works at practice he does a lot of the dirty work and um I, that's what I love about him. He's a dirty work guy, and he, he, he has great leadership skills, and, and it translated over into game day. And um, he just, He's just a worker. He just comes to work, works hard, and, um, and, and, and brings people along with him. How are you feeling about your depth overall? Hey, the depth, it, it is what it is. Um, we always want more. Uh, because you want more don't mean you get more. So you work with what you got. And uh, I'm, uh, the pieces that we have, I'm glad to have them. And I think we'll keep getting better with them. Appreciate it. Hmm? Sorry, you've been asked. What? what was your evaluation of Tavon Ray? Um, I, I, I would say in the um, you know the, probably the early part, it's a typical rookie, a um, bit of anxiety, realizing now, um, you know, like I tell them in this league, everybody, this league, everyone's good, and um, the, the individual you're going against is, is a good player. He's he's receiving a salary, and um, the deal was he went through the anxiety early and then got better in the, in the um, latter half of it. About uh, Keandre, that game. did you like how he pushed the pocket a few times? Oh yeah, I, I I feel I feel I feel good about it. I feel good. I just think we we got more work to do. You know, it's every day. I, I was glad that they played hard. We got lined up. Um, didn't have a lot of mental errors. That was a plus. Now some things as we got to improve. And it's always we they took the drive down the field on us. They ran the ball. We got to keep improving on that. Now after that, we got to try to um, collapse the pocket. And when we had a couple of times we were one on one, and then when our pass rush um, one on ones, so it's things like that we have to keep improving as a group. That's what we're trying to find, and uh, they're making it hard on us. So that's what I like. 
the word interchangeable has been used a mm -hmm. lot for Tony and Tajay. Mm -hmm. It seemed like in that first preseason mm -hmm. game, I mean, it was quite literally almost every snap, yeah. you know, rotating them back and forth. Is that what you anticipate some of the regular season rotation being, or yeah. it, could it be one series and then another series? Well, I think the biggest thing is when you look at Tony's history and you look at Tajay's history is, um, first of all, they're great teammates. And uh, I said, we want uh, a collective group you know, at the end of the day. And, and I've said this from day one when I got here, it's about touches. It's not about carries. And uh, those guys can get, you know, because of their athleticism, they can, they, can, they can help you in various ways in terms of check downs, getting them in uh, spots on safeties, linebackers, um, their chess pieces. And so that's what makes it so fun. And, you know, and, and those guys, they, they root each other on. So, um, Really, really happy to where they are right now. How do you feel about Chestnut and Haskins? Mm -hmm. Sorry if you answered that already. Yeah, I think both of those guys are doing a really good job for us. Um, I think the biggest thing is special teams. Um, you can only dress with so many guys, and I've always told guys, hey, if you're going to be that third guy, you better be running down on kickoff, making a play or returning and uh, making a play or, you know, possibly being a core guy. And uh, But obviously, you know, playing the running back spot is important. And uh, because you have two guys, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So we need that third guy to be able to, to do a little bit of everything, be able to catch it, run it, you know, uh, slam it in the end zone when you need to, and, you know, a four-minute drill and, and being able to finish the game, you know, because uh, at one point we're going to ask that third guy to be able to, to run the football. So he, he should be able to run the football. Are there some specifics as a running back that that guy has to be able to do? Because you guys have talked so much about mm. Tajay and Tony being interchangeable. It's yeah. kind of like they're the same guy. Yeah. Do you need a different guy as the well, third back? Well, we need the best guy. We need the best guy. Um, and what I mean by that is a guy that um, that can do, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, you know, and, and so that's, that's the thing that I look for. I think the biggest thing is when you look at Tajay and you look at uh, Tony, um, I look at them as two different guys, you know, um, two guys that um, can can do some things in space. One's a little bit bigger, you know, a uh, little bit more physical, uh, but they all have the ability to be explosive. Um, and then that third guy, you know, you would, in my mind, is the third guy's got to kind of be able to do uh, protection, you know, hold up in protection, to be able to catch it, you know, if need be. Or come in on short yards and goal line and, you know, slam it in there when he need to. He's got to be able to do a lot of different things and also play special teams too. What he's shown through our camp that he can pick up the information, he can ingest it, and he can take it to the field. So he's done a great job that way. And, and now it's just a matter of getting him out there and letting him run around and hit people. And he did a great job of that the other night. With James, what is the process with the transition? And I guess, what do you see? Is it, a, is it something that's going to take a little bit of time? What yes, it, it's going to take time, but I will say this. I was, um, you know, um, somewhat surprised that he was able to keep his pad level, um, uh, attack the line of scrimmage, not get blown out, you know, doing what, you know, kids that come from another position do. They usually play tall in the box and you get manhandled in there. And he did a good job with his pad level. He was able to keep some things and, and move himself and, and make some plays on the ball. Obviously, you know, there's there's more to the process than just one preseason game. But, you know, I was, I was you know, I, I was hopeful, you know, after I saw him play that, you know, he's starting to take on all the things. And we know he's not afraid. It's just a matter of putting him in the right position. Um, what are you looking for from your guys from this joint practice coming up? Um, you know, obviously the competition, you know. Um, we're going to be going against someone else, and, and the competition, the, the, the sense of urgency, all those things pick up. But you just want guys that will still be able to handle kind of the, 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 the heated atmosphere and, and execute the defense, you know, be good at what they're doing while going against some, you know, some, some other guys. Um, we're not looking for anybody to you know, shake up the world, but to do the job and do it efficiently you know, when you're going against somebody else.